fourth quarter. Jackson lost the handle. Finds Batum for three. Back in front go the Clippers as Nick Batum. Clippers by a point. Powell goes. Powell scores again. Oh, Norman Powell putting on. And the LA Clippers come up with a road victory. The first thing I got to say is, wow, um, the Clippers just completed an enormous comeback win versus the Portland Trail Blazers um, last night. It was a very, um, very entertaining game for the most part. You know, you've seen a lot of good things from both teams and uh, a lot of upside from both teams in regards to their young players. You know, Anthony Simons, of course, you know, for Portland and, you know, the Clippers. I mean, man, what a what a just what a massive comeback win, you know, for them as a team. And I thought that was one of their most complete, you know, games as a team, the way they played. You know, it was it, it was it was a lot of, you know, you saw a lot of you saw a little bit of everybody, you know, and I was really proud to see, happy to see Diabate, uh, Musa Diabate out there. That guy makes an impact every time he's in the game. He had a huge couple of blocks in the game. Um, I think he had about four points and about three or four rebounds, but the stats really don't show. But that guy, you know, really moves his feet well in the paint, moves his feet in regards to, you know, um, you know, stepping up to, you know, block shots and to disrupt shots and cause turnovers. I mean, he's really one of those type guys where I feel like, you know, he can always make an impact every time he steps on the court. And he's kind of like a Isaiah Hardenstein times two because he's more athletic than Isaiah Hardenstein, which the Clippers had last year and which they lost to the, um, you know, which he, you know, they lost him to the New York Knicks where he is now. But uh, Diabate definitely makes up for Isaiah Hardenstein plus more if you ask me. But um, shout out to Norman Powell, man. This dude might definitely be in the running or, you know, get the sixth man of the year, you know, if he comes off the bench continuously and, um, you know, plays like the way he does. Because, I mean, Norman Powell, as I said before, he's just a walking bucket to me. Norman Powell can start for any team in this league, and he can drop 20, 25-plus points every game if he's allowed to. Because, I mean, he's just that good of a scorer. I mean, he can really put the ball in the basket, and people do not realize that is the one key player that they have that can go out there and get buckets at any time, any day of the week, any any time you need him to. And that's the one key player that they have that can come off the bench and drop 30 points if they need him to and not many teams have somebody with that type of luxury you know so it's only maybe a couple other players I could say in the lead that I could think of that can come off the bench and put up numbers like he can uh, maybe Jordan Clarkson is one of them maybe a couple others but um, shout out to Norman Powell definitely a big game shout out to Reggie Jackson too um, you know he had like 20 I think he had what 24 he had like 12 assists I mean and that that was huge he had 24 points but the 12 assists was more huge to me because it showed that you know he can distribute the ball at a high level in which he showed that before but in a game like this where they were down like um i think 65 to 83 uh portland was you know you know beating them down for a while there in the third quarter but at the same time the you know the clippers just buckled down on defense you know nico shout out to nico nicholas batum always seems to make you know big plays his length always disrupts a lot of people in regards to you know them handling the ball or getting to the rim and trying to score over him you know he you know he made a big block at the end there of the game but he also plays you know high iq basketball all the time and i feel like some his wisdom he's putting it off on some of these other young guys you know on the Clippers and it's allowing them to play with that freedom but also play with the mindset of making plays at times or making the play at the right time of the game you can make a lot of plays in a basketball game but making
making the play most of the time is really the the common denominator or the determining factor of you know the outcome of the game so um yeah i feel like a lot of his wisdom is he's putting it off in some of these young players shout out to terrence Mann too he came in there and played some real big minutes um blocking some shots you know playing some good defense as he always does and i mean if you look at this team man there's no way it with it with Kawhi and pg there's no way this team can't win a championship i mean if you if you look at that i mean you just look at this this game against portland they didn't have Kawhi PG and they didn't have Luke Kennard but they had you know um contribution from everybody distributing the wealth and shout out to also um robert covington man I, t I keep saying robert covington is one of those guys as well like he can come off the bench and he can knock down big shots and his defense his length he's almost like a, a younger version of you know a nicholas batum actually you know that's how that's kind of how i look at um robert covington because nicholas batum was able to you know shoot the three at a high clip at his younger age he still could shoot pretty good you know from the three you know now but in, in his younger days on port when he actually played for portland back in the day he was exactly what robert covington is you know he can come out there he can knock it down big threes and his length and his defense disrupt a lot of people you know trying to go against nico you know back in the day in his younger days so he was just a really good skilled foreign player that you know that can definitely help a team win a championship if he was on a team you know that was championship worthy but portland trailblazers has never been that you know at least they've been that in so many years before I was born anyway but um now he's on a championship team he is a little bit older but still he still has the opportunity to win a championship which is good for Nico but um definitely Robert Covington makes an impact as well these you know Robert Covington and Norman Powell honestly you know those two players right there I mean if those two just come off the bench specifically you know with like Terrence Mann and Luke Kennard when he gets healthy and maybe add you know Amir Coffee. he played pretty good as well maybe mix a little bit of you know, uh, got got to put Diabate in there, and got to find a way to get Brandon Boston back to, you know, um, get him on the floor as well when he you know comes back from the G League or whatever. But um, yeah, definitely um, those two right there, Covington and Powell. I mean, they they those two right there are going to make the Clippers a championship team just about. I mean, really, because when you got Norman Powell who can come off the bench and drop thirty anytime, no team is going to be able to handle that. No team is going to be able to deal with that. You got a guy that can come off the bench and put up numbers like a starter. Or like a superstar player in this league i mean there's guys who start in this league who can't drop 25 30 on average norman powell can drop it in his sleep i mean he if he wakes up out the bed he can drop 30 he can drop 25 plus i mean so i mean it, it's 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 really it's gonna be really tough to beat the clippers in a seven game series whoever they play or whoever plays them because the Clippers just have so much that other teams don't. It's like, it's almost unfair, you know, watching them. If they, if, if they really put all this together, if they can stay healthy, put all this together, it's unfair what they have compared to everybody else. I don't even think the Warriors, you know, a lot of people said, you know, be them versus the Warriors, you know, in the conference finals. I mean, the way, from what I seen last night, <laughs> a limited Clippers team, you know, with Norman Powell, Robert Covington chipping in, Diabate, you know, playing defense, you know, Terrence Mann playing defense, you know, um, th them locking up on defense the way they have, you know, Nicholas Batum got length still, of course, um, Reggie Jackson distributing the ball. If you mix John Wall with that, who also didn't play um, in this game, you mix John Wall with that as well with Kawhi, PG, Luke Kennard. I, I don't really see the war. I mean, I, I think they could beat the Warriors like 4-2. I don't even think it would go seven games. I think the Warriors might win two games in this in that series against the Clippers if the Clippers come out the way they're supposed to. Actually, hell, I don't know if anybody in the play, in the Western Conference can win over two games against the Clippers if the Clippers play to their level of capabilities because they just got too much scoring. They have too much defense, and they got guys that they can plug in at any point in time that can go out there and make the game difficult. Like I said, Robert Covington doesn't even play that much, seem like, but when Robert Covington comes in, he makes an impact i mean like i say he had like 15 points he hit like three or four three pointers uh he was he was really engaged and like i said his defense is probably one of the best on the on on that team i mean honestly i mean you know you got Kawhi pg he's probably the second he's probably the third second or third best defender on that team so i mean it's like he comes off the bench so it's like you know if you look at their team and how they're stacked it's gonna be hard for a team to deal with them very hard for a team to deal with them in a seven game series 
especially if they're healthy. I mean, hell, it'd be hard for a team to deal with them in a seven game series with the, even if they're unhealthy, kind of because they just have so much depth all the way around and they got so much depth on both sides, offense and defense. And that's hard for teams to really deal with. So, you know, I um I just really hope this team you know gets healthy and, and stays healthy because I mean, I, I you know, we haven't seen this team really put it all together, but the bits and pieces that we see, like like last night against Portland, you know, here and there, you can just tell they, they're, they're a championship team if they're healthy. You can just tell. I mean, it's really not even debatable. So, um, you know, shout out to them. Big win, big comeback. Um, it definitely just shows everybody how talented they really are as a team. And um, it shows when Ty Lue really wants to plug in players and give players an opportunity and put them in the right spots and give them the opportunity to play and go out there and just, you know, and, and illustrate what they can do. It really shows, you know, his coaching, you know, towards this team. If he's giving everybody an opportunity as much as he can, it shows that everybody on this team can contribute. And it shows that his coaching ability of what he can get out of these players, you know what I'm saying, really is 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 uh, ascending if he can keep, you know, the if he can keep everybody on the same page and on one accord. If he can do that, his coaching level, uh, his, his coaching mentality, spirit and all that will go up. And, uh, and this team will ascend and go up as well if they stay healthy so um it's um man i tell you they they really have a lot on this roster and um, it would be a shame to see this team not at least make it to a finals because this team has way too much talent to not even at least get there you know what i'm saying so um shout out to them for the big win you know uh, shout out to everybody for playing well i mean they that's this is probably one of the most complete games as a team there was a complete team win seemed like to me and that's very odd to say because it wasn't no Kawhi, no pg no luke Kennard, no john wall but still he looked more like a very complete team win rather than the other wins that I've that they've gotten this season where it just looks like, you know, Paul George did his thing, this guy did his thing, Reggie did his thing, you know, Kawhi did his thing, whatever like that. It just looked, you know, very, you know, uh they look like this tonight, you know, or 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 against, against the game against uh Portland, I would say, you know, it looked like they played as a unit. It didn't look like take turn basketball, all isolation. I mean, they they at first, you know, it looked like, you know, they, you know, they, uh, you know, they were struggling, things like that. They were down by 18 points, all that. But when it came time for them to really, you know, come together, you know, and they were down by 18 points, that's when it started to look like they played more like a unit. I, I, I should say that maybe not the whole game, but they looked more like a, a, a team that played with cohesiveness, even though they didn't have their star players. And that's the one thing I kind of worry about the Clippers. You know, they look more even when when you like when you watched them last year, all those games they were down 20 plus points when they're down and their backs are against the wall they play more like a cohesive unit when they're down 20 plus points rather than when they're up 20 plus points or when the game is close and I really don't understand that about the Clippers but you know that's just how they play and that's just how they are they play better with their backs against the wall I mean hell you can make a case as I always talk about in all my videos when they were down 0-2 in every series two years ago when Kawhi was there in the playoffs before he got hurt they played better with their backs against the wall that I don't know why this team really thrives like that but they really do and um i really hope they kind of change that because it'd be better if they're up 2-0 in a series it'd be better if they're up 18 points you know in the third fourth quarter and you know resting some of their players and giving their players more rest that they need to go into the next game rather than put the strain on them to do these epic comebacks and and you know that can cause injuries too because you're putting extra energy into a game where you really most of the time you should be the better team you should be dominating and um you know you should just win because i think you know the blazers they didn't have damian lillard so i mean it's like really the clippers really this is a game the clippers you know should you know should win to me you know even though you know the warriors i mean the uh the trailblazers are pretty decent but i mean they didn't have gp2 or damian lillard as well so i mean i felt like the clippers you know would just be would just win this game maybe about you know 10 15 points i figured the clippers would win it kind of easily um but you know hey portland put up a good fight and uh just wasn't good enough the clippers you know they were the comeback kids once again and um it proves to you know to avail to their uh situation and um you know big win for them but hey, that's my take on everything. Leave any comments in the comment section. Check out my other videos if you haven't. Also, please hit the like, subscribe, and notification bell if you like. And uh, hey, till next time.